Hi, just a quick uh, second channel video. Um, what I've got here, this is just going to be a single take video, is the WENS 540 debug meter. It's a, well, I'll um, go to the data sheet. Yes, it is all crusty and whatnot. Um, I can only assume, don't ask me how I come upon this, um, it's... Um, a crusty, uh, like a, a repair unit or something. It's just um, scrapped, basically. But I thought, hey, we'd just do a teardown of this thing. And uh, what is it? Well, let's have a quick woo, look. It's actually a uh, multifunction oscilloscope. Oscilloscope meter, not oscilloscope. Um, they've dropped the O because, well, you know. That's uh, too good for China. Anyway, um, high performance debug meter top. I've done a video of this I, um, at the trade show last time. Uh, Charles from uh, Trio Test um, actually uh, had this. It was like brand new, released at the time. Anyway, oscilloscope, a logic analyzer, a protocol analyzer, digital pattern generator, all sorts of, you know, it's, it's a really interesting bit of kit. You can see the custom probes and everything coming over there for the uh, logic analyzer um, and it's you know graphical multimeter and everything else um, you know it's like nominally cat 3 600 volts you know it's got all your regular multimeter functions but a big graphical display and does all uh, logic analyzer type um, stuff too so I thought we'd uh, have a squiz at this let me go back sorry I'm only got a single capture window here um, and uh, let's have a quick look at it. So, um, it's all on one main board here. And if you see the light flicker here, by the way, um, <laughs> that is actually my overhead light, which is causing the glare issues there. And it's um, intermittent. It's actually uh, flickering at the moment. So, let's actually start at the input here. I haven't actually looked at this yet. So, I thought we'd do it live. And... Uh, We've got our requisite, um, the input uh, jacks, you know, they're, they're the split type down the side, you know, they're okay. Um, but yeah, nothing to write home about. Uh, we've got our, uh, oh, what is that? What is that? Is that just a cap? Or is that, no, that uh, that could be a spark. Is that like a, is that like a spark gap or something? I'm not sure. That's a cross. That's across the input. Directly across the input like that. Um, SP101. That's interesting. I'm going to assume that that's a, uh, just a spark gap directly across the input. Anyway, we has our, have ourselves a uh, PTC there. Yeah, there it is. It's labeled PTC. Um, got ourselves an isolation gap under this uh, resistor here. Is that uh, the current sense resistor for here? I'm not sure. There's a, anyway two fuses. Um, whether or not they had HRC in there, I don't know. I don't particularly care. Um, and because like you wouldn't use this as an industrial meter or whatever. It's just it's just not going to happen. No, there are our two current sense resistors over here. They look uh, uh, neat. Where's the uh, tap coming out of those? Ah, oh, can't actually see the tap coming off the bottom of there anywhere. It's not a four terminal jobby, so uh, yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Anyway, no four terminal current sense. Anyway, lots of relays on this puppy. Um, so there's like five relays on this thing. Geez, like the only other major meter that has relays is like the Gossen one, I think. And uh, it's I don't even think it has that many. Oh, a couple of little uh, trimmer caps there. Eh, 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 eh. Um. And HY3131 chipset. There you go. Exactly the same chipset that's used in the new 121GW multimeter as well as the Keysight U1282A and um, others. It's quite a nice little uh, chipset. And I like how they've actually laid out the board and uh, like put them in the section. So they've got the multimeter chipset all in its own section. But obviously they, uh, they actually provisioned for a metal can on here because they've got the... Um, just the uh, the pads there to uh, solder down a metal can, not like a through hole ones, but uh, just like oh, there goes my lights. Uh, surface mount uh, metal shielding can, but obviously it hasn't been removed because um, otherwise we'd know about it. Um, although that one, what's that there? Anyway, I don't know. It's all been hacked around here, so yeah, it's obvious. I don't know if that's a production thing or whether or not 
Um, it's been some sort of repair thing. Don't know. Anyway, they haven't uh, labelled the sections. But uh, multimeter chipset. Uh, what else is there? Oh, this is, of course, the oscilloscope front end. Because it's an oscilloscope. Duh. I was just wondering for a minute what that was. Yes, so there are our compensation caps. Is it a dual channel? Uh, one, and, and that's why you've got your relays in here to do your, uh, you know, switching. Um, and uh, ADG604, uh, 8066, you can go look up these, playing along at home, They're, they'd be your uh, uh, driver uh, diff amp uh, drivers for your ADC, and, and analog devices AD9283, um, dash 50, so that'd be, a, I assume that's like an 8-bit ADC, uh, 50 meg samples per second, usually the dash 50 would uh, denote that. IO expander, HC595, got to have one of those babies in there, classic, and uh, what's that? Uh, LMP7704, Please excuse the crudity of this uh, teardown. It's all uh, done live, single take, CMP401. They're uh, uh, comparators, I believe. Um, oh, and by the um, no, I'll get on to that. So anyway, on the bottom, it's just got miscellaneous uh, stuff. Is there some diode protection in there for the uh, front end? Perhaps something like that. There's some, uh, is there some diode? No, no, they would be the, uh, they would be the diff amps for the... Uh, Oh, no. Current, no. I was going to say, there, that's probably your amp. There you go. That's probably your amp for your uh, current sense, I'd say, for your current ranges. Anyway, got an extra relay on the bottom. Jeez. Uh, got ourselves a buzzer there. And that, that'd be a buzzer. Um, uh, the difference between a buzzer and a transducer is that a buzzer has the oscillator built in. You just, you just apply the voltage and bzzz. Um, sorry, that's a poor buzzer sound, isn't it? Whereas a uh, piezo transducer, you've got to actually drive it with a signal because it's just a piezoelectric uh, element and it doesn't uh, do anything on its own. If you just apply DC, it's just a capacitor. Um, so, ATML320, is that a, um, th that's an E squared prom. That looks like an I squared C thing. You can tell by the two resistors there going up to pin 8, which is uh, almost certainly the power, it is, because there's a bypass cap across there. Um, so that is uh, some um, E squared prom calibration stuff. So there you go, nothing else special up here, just got a DC to DC converter. So that's all the bottom. Uh, what's the main processor over here? Oh, the PIC fanboys go wild. PIC 32 MX 795 F. For those playing along at home and an Actel Pro ASIC 3, that's interesting um, because maybe the PIC32 can't do all the um, stuff on its own for the uh, oscilloscope and, uh, you know, a pattern serial decoding and all that. So the Actel Pro ASIC 3 FPGA is obviously uh, doing some stuff down in there, doing the business. What is that? I have no idea what that is. That's interesting. Bueller? Bueller? Um, oh, that's got to be uh, just based on what it is there. That's a uh, DC to DC uh, controller chip. So anyway, the inter one of the interesting parts about this is it uh, does have USB. It's probably the only multimeter on the market that has USB. And a lot of people ask, um, it was a very common question on the 121GW multimeter design, why we didn't include USB? The answer is safety regulations. You cannot just whack in a USB, especially when it's on the same ground as everything else, because your case has to be sealed from your ground terminal down here. It's all, you know, there can't be any exposed metal. Um, you, pro you, know, you might have been able to have one like behind the battery cover or something like that, but this is why um, virtually every multimeter on the market um, does not have USB. They have like infrared or they have, you know, new ones like the 121GW will come in with blue, you know, wireless uh, Bluetooth type stuff. Um, but before that, they've all had like serial infrared interfaces. Uh, they wouldn't even have a proper serial RS-232 connection. Why? Because of the electrical continuity between the connector and the input jack. It, it creates a safety hazard. So um, I'm not sure how, well, I'd actually, 
Duh. I do know how they got this one passed because it's got um, an analog devices Adem 4160. They're very nice uh, chips, very expensive too. I'm, I'd like to know what they get those for in volume. I've looked at those in volume uh, quite a few years back now and I can't remember the price, but geez, they were a pretty penny, even in like 1,000 or 10,000 uh, volume. And that's a complete USB opto isolator i mean look it's like they've actually done it properly they've uh routed out the tracks right around that absolutely brilliant you know there's a little bit of uh creepage uh distance in there but the solder mask handles that no problems um and yeah um they've just like completely isolated that so uh with the uh chip of course and you can see the chip under there and that's how they can get if you didn't have that you would not be able to have your usb an external metal connector on a um, you know on a, a certified multimeter um, it's just not going to happen so there you go and that's why you can get them on uh, well you can get them on oscilloscopes because the oscilloscopes use have grounded input connections which is the mains which is connected directly to mains they have to be um, for safety reasons so there you go what's that what's that crystal there run at hundred is that a hundred Wow, that's a that's speedy, isn't it? Wow, wonder if they've got to, if they're doubling that or doing something else in uh, side. But you know, usually you have like an external 20 megahertz crystal and then you PLL it up inside the uh, uh, FPGA. But um, yeah, that's uh, they've got 100 megahertz uh, straight off the bat. Wow, and the PIC uh, 32F because people are going to want to know eight. Ah, it's just a standard 8 meg jobby, but the PIC32 um, series actually has a PLL built in and it can multiply that, I can't, like four, six times or something, four, four times at least, something like that. So it might be operating at, say, 48 megahertz or something like that. So there you go. That is inside the WENS um, 540 and there's nothing else interesting in there. You know, it's just got the uh, graphical LCD and whatnot. Um, and this one's really crusty and the bottom of it is just uh, the bottom of the case like that is just uh, it's got some sort of, oh is that a custom is that a, oh is that a custom battery pack yeah that's a custom battery pack so we'll probably find like a lithium ion uh, gonna find a lithium ion charger no that was the I squared C job wasn't it ATM LH3 22 gigabytes is that a 2 gigabit Sorry, wow, that's a heck of a... Anyway, bat one, where's that going off to? Let's have a look on the other side. Nothing doing, but you might find, if you look hard enough, you might find a, because uh, I presume that was a lithium ion pack. Maybe it's got the charger built into it, perhaps, on the board, like a board or in part of the pack or something like that. Not sure, because I'm not seeing anything. Ah, could, could be that. Could be that thing there. That's probably a lithium ion charger, I'd say. Um, by the way, if you're asking, no, I do not. Um, th that zoom up in the top corner, yes, it is a hex thing. And yes, it is bloody annoying on my Tagano microscope. And I did figure out a way to turn it off once. There you go, for those playing along at home. That's probably some sort of uh, lithium ion charger, is it? I don't know. Um, and yeah, I, I think there's a combination on my little controller here to turn that off but I can't remember I don't know might be RTFM but there you go that's a look inside the WENS 540 single take tear down catch you next time